So this is throwback baits. Giving you the feel. You see those baits? He's known for that. There's going to be a picture right now. Mm. It's throwback baits. Awesome right. baits. Crazy good swim baits. Should do a lure review on his stuff eventually. Okay. All right. I'm just showing you that picture <laughs> so you know. And this is a bait that comes from China. It's like the exact same thing. That's not throwback baits. That's a completely unrelated company, I think. That's making really? that. Yeah, and selling it wholesale and distributing it to like people who resell blanks for lure painters. Oh, they like just that. sell it blank. Yeah, like you can that? buy a blank. That's that. Wow. So my question is Are they the exact same? I can't see a side by side. They're not the exact same. There's like lip angle, tiny, tiny, minute differences in the lip angle, the eyeball on the mass produced one is like pointy and like angry looking mm. throwbacks isn't i'm pretty sure and he has a different tail throwback has like this yeah. big plain tail that one had like spines on it but are the gill or the yeah gills and everything it looked but those might not even be the same either okay but it's just as far as i know no credits given to throwback and it was all done like without his say i don't really want to offend him? I have a question first. But I I feel like I just got to say. Okay. I wasn't thinking that was his when I saw the white ones. Yeah, they're not. I Like, I didn't think they were the same until you said that. Yeah, there are differences. They're not the okay. same. <laughs> okay. We, yeah. So, my question is, you know how I'm making a bait for a bait drop right now? At the end of this month? That's yeah. like the first time I told anybody publicly. You get that kind of spicy information on this podcast if a chinese company did that with my bait how would you feel i feel like they have before haven't they with what i'm used to people imitating your baits normally because they they try to make them look similar like because they're learning and stuff yeah so people usually kind of copy in a way so i guess i'm kind of used to that so i don't i mean i'd just be like wow you know but it'd be like yeah kind of typical I think the big difference is, though, that, like, thousands of those are getting mass-produced and sold. Yeah. And throwback, he batches up, like, I really don't know how much yeah. baits he makes at a time, but he sells quite a bit. It's very unfortunate. That's how I see it. Very unfortunate. Can't do anything about it. Type yeah. Type of thing. I should have formulated an opinion about this before bringing that up. What? I know that people do it a lot. Mm-hmm. The cliche thing to say is like, oh, the stick baits, the Sanko, everybody, every mold manufacturer and every bait company kind of sells a stick bait. Same mm -hmm. thing as a Gary Yamamoto Sanko, you know? And then people are saying that because it's a guy that makes baits out of his garage and you're copying his stuff, it's like extra bad because he's coming up with it all in his own mind. Yeah, it's very unfortunate and not fair. It's just kind of mean to do that to the smaller guy instead of the big companies people are that way about it is he does he sell a lot like is he pretty successful like that from what i've seen yeah he's got pictures on his instagram of like bins of blanks like he can I bash them I up could like see that like a side by side yeah they're pretty similar i'd say they definitely took inspiration i would say at least <laughs> from him i think they <laughs> Everyone that's ever named what the uh, knockoff is, they, they always call it the throwback knockoff. Like, everybody just says that. I don't know. It probably... Does it have a name? Let's see. The 5-inch Legend Wake. They call it the Legend Wake. But I've shown pictures. Poor you guys guy. can say what you think. I don't know what I would feel like if somebody did that to me. I know that it would help. I know for a fact it would help the sales of that bait. There's reasons why. Well, the thing is, they're selling it plain. Like, you have to paint it yourself. Yeah. He's not selling them plain, right? Like, he completes the whole thing and sells it. Well, the thing is, also, that lure painters are going to be able to get those for, like, probably less than $5 each and then turn around and sell them for something a little over 10 bucks each. And yeah, he but sells they his can't for, like, 80 Right, but they can't ever say it's his bait. Right. They can't say, this is a blah, blah, blah that I painted. It's not. Right. So he still has his own creation, his own name. That's Only why. Only he can make them. That's why I think it will help yeah. him sell more. It's becoming like a hype thing. And people are um, 
thinking thinking of it as a more substantial bait because there's copiers Someone out there copy. that want to copy it and yeah. resell and and I'm sh- I'm certain he will sell more because of that. Mm-hmm. If that happened to you, I would initially be very angry, and then yeah, I would think well, they can't you know, take over your body and steal your talents and yeah. make baits for themselves. It's like so a big Chinese manufacturing company is confirming like he's the hot stuff. Mm-hmm. And like we have to copy him because that's where it's at. Yeah. And then everybody else thinks that's where it's at. Yeah. But yeah, they can't like a Chinese company can't say this is a marling bait. It's not. Yeah. So it's like it's still a Chinese bait in the end, even if it looks similar. Yeah. So angry and flattered and kind of like, oh, sweet, is how I would feel. A lot of people wouldn't feel that way. Yeah, I think a lot of people like to get angry, (laughs) too. (laughs) You know what I mean? I think they're just mistaken on how they think about it, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. A lot of people do like to get angry, but you got to follow through and think, what is this actually doing? Yeah, it really doesn't mean anything harmful to him it helps in the end yeah it seriously helps yeah that's my opinion so way to go what's his name throwback throwback yeah yeah i i don't think he's been very quiet about it i don't think he said anything about it yeah not a peep i mean he might be in cahoots with the chinese manufacturers trying to hype up his baits yeah maybe he won maybe yeah maybe he has like a deal with i don't know that maybe he paid them i don't know yeah maybe they're paying him confirmed i have no clue (laughs) That'd be some technique when it comes yeah. to hyping stuff up. Yeah, in the end, I don't think it's that big of a deal. He'll be okay. I know. Did the fellas think it was like... I can't talk about the bait group. Oh. Secret bait group I'm not supposed to talk about. All right. Okay. Unrelated question to what we were talking about before. If I didn't make lures or make YouTube videos and do what I do to bring resources in, Is there anything that you would prefer I do to bring resources in to this family? Like if I had to choose your job? Yeah, yeah, sure. It could be anything. And it can't be any YouTuber type thing. Yeah, it can't be related to what I do now. What would you like to see me as? Or could you still do YouTube, just be doing something else? You really just want me to be a YouTuber? That's the best? That's pretty sweet. Yeah, you can stay home, work from home. That's the best. There's nothing else? I was just thinking you could do something else and still film it and be a YouTuber. Yeah, it's just still doing YouTube. Okay, so but I'm YouTube. But I've had some ideas that I thought you would like. And okay, well, let me think. Okay. Because, mm. oh, yeah, I don't want you to do anything dangerous. I don't want you to do anything like... I Provocative? Yeah, weird. Oh, yeah. I don't want you to do anything... I just like that you're at home. I was thinking like some sort of crazy investor dude where I could still be at home. I knew th- I know that that's a huge thing for you. Mm-hmm. And like... I just do what I do on my computer and invest money certain ways and I'm just a genius at it. (gasps) You could be like a house flipper or like a property manager or like a real estate something. I hear the excitement just draining out of each example you're giving. Because I don't know what it's called. It's just just not as good as a YouTuber, is it? No, nothing is. YouTuber is the best. I was thinking whatever... I could do that spends the least amount of time and makes the most amount of money, like the least amount of effort and time and makes the most amount of money. Yeah. But I think it's very important to have passive income. And if you had like properties, that would be really good. Yeah. People can passive. make bank doing real estate yeah. flips. It'd and be stuff. Re- something in real estate. That's what I would choose. Mm. Not a realtor. Like you'd have to own properties. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. And then I could like help you design and like flip them. You can be I would my love assistant that. still. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be awesome. That's just, you probably answer that because that's what you like. Mm-hmm. Like you would like to be not a realtor, but a flipper yourself. Yeah. And design and you like the interior design and exterior curb appeal design. And mm-hmm. If I had the man muscle to do it, totally. That'd be so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Get lifting. <laughs> I, I could never like start lifting and flipping that strong, honey. yeah right on. so if youtube ever goes down that's our plan you're gonna start lifting and flipping no you are <laughs> questions from the subscribers they were in the comments of our last video so thank you everyone if you could use any material on or off earth to make a bait what would it be 
I feel like that's if you could use any material off Earth to make a bait, what would like? They're just saying there's no limits. Yeah, but there's way more interesting material off Earth, probably. All right. An unfounded alien wood, of course. That's closest to Tupelo wood as possible. All right. <laughs> I, I still want the ideal wood to work with, but you know, an unfounded off Earth, wherever trees grow in this universe, that's not Earth. That's as similar to Tupelo wood as possible. That's easy. Wow. Easy. Okay. <laughs> I have no comment on that answer. Yeah. Oh, and, and uh, if I can get, if there is a metal off earth that's not as toxic as lead that I can work with, but it has the same properties, like as heavy as lead and everything, mm -hmm. that too, to weigh the bait with, of course. Yeah. I really am not interested in like, hypothetical la la land like i know that's why so I, my brain completely is like okay i take the enthusiasm off. that you don't have upon myself <laughs> sorry i double up and i'm enthusiastic about that stuff so yeah i feel like i'm very rare like that like a lot of people like whimsical like what if type things yeah I'm, i just have no interest yeah i'm really, really trying to think of an example that you might be that way and and <laughs> There's none. <laughs> There's Absolutely none. vacant of uh, something like that. It's kind of sad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any accidents or injuries while bait making? Yes. Um, well, I had my scariest one on video. I got nicked with the bandsaw on my middle finger. Mm. You could see the kerf of the bands. Like there was space in my finger. You could see where it cut in into my fingernail and everything. It hurt. Yeah, that was pretty gross. It was a doll blade. It hurt. And there was like chips in the wound. What were you doing? Cutting out a bait. A small one? No, it wasn't even small. I was just not, not feeling it that day. Just not mm -hmm. caring about what I was doing as much as I usually do. And that middle finger just slipped by the bait and hit the bandsaw blade. Wow. Yep. If I'm really up for it, I probably will put the footage in right now. So they know. Yeah, you could hear it pop that blade real quick. Oh, and my... sick. Ugh. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. There's some that finger is, meat in the blade. That is really after that. disturbing. I remember the one where you shoved your chisel in your thumb muscle. Oh, I've shoved my chisel into my palm before and had to pull it out and it like the skin pulled out with it a little bit and it was stuck yeah. in there a ways. What about the one that was like right here? Yeah. That kept opening, I remember. Yeah, it kept being really bloody. Yeah. I didn't get stitches for either of those and when you don't get stitches, it can bleed for a long time if you need stitches. For and then sure. there was one, I feel like, on your finger or something. I kept, like, trying to hold your hand, and then it would, like, break open because I would forget you had it. I think I cut myself with my knife just out, oh. out fishing or something. Oh. Knock on wood, you don't lose any fingers or anything crazy. I don't think you will. I might. It's always a possibility doing this kind of work. You just got to, you have to always think like you might. That Then you don't. Yeah. Or you're less likely to. Like you got to be scared of the stuff you're dealing with a little bit. Who's that guy that lost his finger Oops. and has like a robot hand? Another YouTuber. Perkins. I don't know if it's Perkins Boys Construction. It's like a construction channel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he lost. He got them locked oh, off. Oh, all of them? I think three. And maybe a oh. nub somewhere in there. Yeah, and he has a prosthetic that actually bends and he yeah. can grab things with. It's awesome. Yeah. I've just seen his channel and seen the prosthetic. I thought he explained it and had a whole video. We're gonna Maybe I can look it up real Yeah, quick. we need to tell them, otherwise it's not a good story. <laughs> if you type in Perkins Brothers Builders, the next soonest search term on Google is fingers. <laughs> wow. Everybody wants to know. Oh my gosh, he's like on the hospital bed. He's full of morphine. On a jointer. It got sucked into a jointer. Oh no. Nothing was guarding the blades as they were spinning. He had earmuffs on so he couldn't hear them spinning. He, play, he had boards on the joiner. So then he reached over to get a board. 
but he put his hand in the joiner and it sucked and it in. sucked in fingers and yeah i guess he forgot he had it on and didn't turn it off right and and he probably wasn't even looking as he's reaching over to get yeah, boards and he just he placed just it right it. in the blades oh my gosh and it's spinning blades you know. i would pass right out and just be done that is really why are we talking about this Oh, because your worst oh, injury. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's not going to be like that. I, I'm pretty... I don't do that sort of stuff enough to, like, have the chance to not pay attention to what I'm doing. I just make little lures, you know? I don't, like, run 50 boards through a joiner. Yeah. But it's still a, ca a possibility, and I know I always have to be kind of scared of what I'm doing. Yeah, like when you're chiseling Yeah. or using any machine... You it's just been a push long. too hard or something in it. If you're too comfortable at all, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it can happen. It's been a long time, though, since I've injured myself at all. Well, if you start doing these batch of bait drops, oh, I know. that's going to be it's up redundant. In the chances. So. Uh oh. Yikes. Should I show them the bait? Sure, if you want. I just ran over there like a schoolboy. <laughs> you did. That's all you get to see. Okay, next one. This one's kind of deep. They want to know your best relationship advice. That's too deep. I'm going to start getting well, philosophical, and people are going to get offended. <laughs> Stop. If I go, if I go Let's there. Let's just keep it general. Just basic. Um, I could say mine. Yeah, start with you. It's very cheesy, and everyone says it, but communication is... Yeah. Very, very important. So, like, if you're mad, you need to say you're mad and why and not blame type right. of thing. Just be very honest, but not blame fully honest. Like, come from your own perspective, yeah. being honest. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of have to hold that very sacred mm -hmm. and, and worship that in a way. Yeah. And you're both seeking that, mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. That makes a good relationship. I should say more. <laughs> we can leave it at that if you want. Okay. Next. <laughs> this one's a little... Another deep one? It's just a little sassy. When you put milk, not milk, into cereal, is it still a beverage? Is it now a sauce or broth? It depends on how long the cereal's been in the milk because the cereal can kind of dissolve and get all of its sugars and whatever else is in it in the milk, and it's no longer just milk. No, they're asking about milk. Milk. Not milk. Milk? <laughs> they just wanted to hear me say milk? Yeah. Milk. I don't care. <laughs> so is what is it? Milk. No. Is it a beverage? <laughs> is it broth or is it a sauce? I don't know. I don't understand why the question is about it being a broth or a sauce. Oh, because you're you adding put... it to something. Milk is like a drink. Yeah. So they're saying, is it still a drink if you poured it on cereal? Or is it turn into something else? Oh, and like soup is the broth. The liquid in soup yeah. is broth. And they just wanted to make fun of how I say milk. I know. And I say milk too. So we don't say milk. <laughs> <laughs> milk. <laughs> Ugh. That sounds gross to me. I know. When you over enunciate the I in milk. Yeah. It sounds like whiny, milk. whiny little girl or something. Oh, geez. Doesn't it? <laughs> milk. <laughs> yes, I agree. I just wouldn't have said whiny little girl. Oh, I'm not saying everyone who who says it like that sounds like that. I'm saying I sound like that right. if I say it. Right. And you do too. Yeah, I can't say that without sounding like a whiny little girl. Yeah, I guess. we just have a problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. See, I'm okay with the hypotheticals and stuff, but this kind of stuff that... <laughs> It's reality and it's just who cares and I don't know. Yeah. Like I can't get into. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. It was kind of a weird question. Yeah. <laughs> Soup. <laughs> Soup. <laughs> so we were talking about this a little bit, but then I said we need to save it for the podcast. Oh. So I have a, an adult paint by number that I'm doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> an adult <laughs> paint by number. Getting crafty. Uh, we can insert a picture here so you know what I'm talking about. I have to go take a picture of that now? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. It's not complete whatsoever. I've just been working on it. 
it's really fun and relaxing. But I was wondering, I'm not artistic. Like I can't just come up with a painting. I don't even know how people do that. Like come up with and just paint and stuff happens or like draw and like it makes something. I cannot do that at all. And so I was like, I'm very crafty. I'm just not artistic. And then I was asking you, like, can you be crafty and not artistic? Yeah, and something came into my mind and I forgot. It Well, you were talking about, like, guys who make baits even. Yeah. Yeah, this is, like, the ability, if you have it or if you don't, to, like, before the things even started, visualize the end product in high detail in your brain. Yeah. That's, like, what being an artist is. Yeah. And then knowing all the techniques to make it happen is a capability of the people who are crafty still. Like, you can know how to do it. But, like, if you can't visualize what to make beforehand, you're not going to go there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The people who make lures and aren't artistic can make just as good of looking lures Mm -hmm. as the people who are super artistic and have the vision of the end product in their head already. That's what I was going to say. I think if you're crafty, you just need more of inspiration, like something to look at to like kind of go off of. Yeah. Because even when I do um, tying the feather troubles, it helps way more to see your lure that I'm copying and then make it. I can't, usually I can't just like, I mean, sometimes I can. I have made cool ones where I just like, oh, these would go good together and I make a cool one. Yeah, but even before I go into like a super crazy detailed paint scheme, I know the golds with the greens that are going to look good and the transition into the whites from there and stuff and where on the body everything's going and stuff. And you really have to think about that Mm -hmm. and have your ducks in a row before you start going there. People who aren't artistic understand that still. Like, holy crap, why'd you put that there? And then you make it make sense later. And it's like, oh, that's why. Yeah. My brain does not work that way. Like, even watching, like, Bob Ross paint, for instance, and he just puts, like, a happy little tree in. Yeah. How does he even know? I don't know. It's weird to explain. He understands the tolerances. He's done, yeah, it's practice, and he's done it so many times. Yeah. And he knows what a little quick swoosh is going to do in and out, like the tiny, tiny, minutia little differences and how it could be his little swoosh. Yeah. And he compensates for it in his brain before he does it. He knows it's going to be fine. He just has that assurance because he's done it so much, you know? Yeah. It's. I feel like you have a different brain, though, when you're artistic than if you're not. It's a looking forward. You're really looking forward ahead brain. Mm-hmm. And, like, really watching your step. Mm. And, like, practicing watching your step. It's not just watching it. It's... You're only stepping where you're certain, but it's just like this crazy detailed process that you're certain about. That probably made no sense, but I was coming from the heart. I'm just, I'm looking at that chip painting too. Yeah. We can take a picture of that. I'm taking pictures of everything. We got to write this down so you don't forget. But like how? I could never even start to make that. I'll shout you out. But he knew what, he knew how to throw that brush to make that fur look that way, you know? Well, even the colors, like how to pick the colors and everything and where to put them is just like... He just knew about the colors and what they look good with and what to use and how to use them before he even started. You know what I mean? It's impressive. Yeah, it is impressive because there's a lot to it. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say too, back to that guy who the Chinese company took inspiration. Maybe the Chinese company is crafty and not artistic and so they took inspiration and kind of copied because they're more crafty it's It's just they don't have the the part of the brain developed to be the artist that comes up with the new thing but they can do the thing that already exists real good probably yeah that's that's kind of understandable a crafty mind it should be like we knocked off this guy props to this guy love his design yeah 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 here's his handle Here's all this stuff. If Definitely. you if you want the real bait, go there. Yeah. And then do all that. That's the yeah. way it should be. Yeah. Say where they got their inspiration from. Then I think no one would have a problem. Yeah. But yeah, like, you can't pretend like you made this up yourself. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't 
they're probably not saying anything. They're probably not pretending that they made it up themselves Mm -hmm. or giving credit. They're just, here's the thing. Which, whatever. Probably a language barrier issue. We have a big announcement. We do? You hired a new assistant. Oh. I bought you a laptop, even. Yeah, the assistant is me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I only work nights. (laughs) Yep. Did you tell Amanda? No. Oh, man. So, we decided it would... Okay, so we were going to have Amanda from Epic Bait Molds do it, but then we decided it would be easier if I just do it because we can talk real time and, Mm. like, plan things easier. You went to college for this. I did, for administrative assistant, Mm. and I like doing tasks. Right. So. She's my manager. I'm your assistant. Assistant. Yeah. Managing assistant. Yep. I got my own laptop is coming. Yep. And yeah, I'm going to, I updated the Teespring website that hasn't been updated in years. New merch. Mm Mm-hmm. There's going to be even more. There's going to be more designs. I'm going to do your sponsor. Yeah. There might be more sponsors and videos now because somebody's doing that. Yeah. My assistant. (laughs) That's pretty much it. There's not a lot else to manage a YouTube channel with. Yeah, and just my normal. I already did, like, the tax stuff. Yeah, paperwork for business stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, that'll be really fun. I'm excited. Yeah, you got to reach out to companies that do sponsorships for YouTube. And Mm -hmm. there's, like, been so many people that email me, and I just ignore, which is horrible because it's so much lost money. Yeah, why do you uh, ignore them? Do you see the videos I make? And how many cuts are no, in them I'm, and all the work I do to put out a video? Like, I, I, I just do I that. I do. I'm, ask, I'm like, for them so they know. I got offended. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know why. I'm asking for the viewers. Well, I answered. <laughs> Basically, he's too busy for everyone <laughs> except for... Just family <laughs> and make YouTube videos mm-hmm. is it. Understandable. You can't do everything. You're only one man. You know, if I really put my mind to it, I'd probably figure it out. But I don't have a mind to put to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. I just, ugh. I hate paperwork and talking to other people that I don't know very well and trying to see how much money I can get from them. It's a bummer. Yeah. But I'll do it for you. You're the assistant now. <laughs> it should work out. Yep. Um. Someone commented about they were wondering if you it was you about the gover- governor's award, if you could talk about that. Oh, yeah. Won a Carnegie Award as well and a governor's award from it. Got $5,000 from the Carnegie Award. Well, you should say what happened first. How old were we? Probably like 18. Were we in high school still? I think we were like 18 or 19. It was 2011. Oh, when this so happened. we were... 18. We were 19 years old Mm -hmm. on the beach on the river. I guess it's not the beach. Just on a sandbar on the river. On Father's Day. Was it? Mm Mm-hmm. I had no clue. Fishing. Fishing. And uh, a family uh, was letting their small children swim in the river. Yeah, which you're not supposed to do. It's very dangerous. Yeah, but it wasn't like really low either. There's current there. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's signs saying danger, strong current. And there's a dam. Yeah, and there's a broken up dam Mm -hmm. with like really turbulent current. If you go through that thing, you're not going to have a good day. Basically, everyone knows you shouldn't swim in it, especially not kids. Yeah, but this family, for some reason, was letting their children swim in the river. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got washed away a bit. The kids did. Yeah, they got out in the channel. Was it like three kids? Three kids, yeah. And they couldn't swim back to the bank. And the parents were like yelling, help, help. The parents weren't jumping in or anything. Yeah. They were freaking out. Yeah. So apparently they couldn't swim. Yeah. They couldn't swim and they were letting their kids swim in that river. Yeah. And there was a man fishing closer to that family. We were far down. We weren't close by this. So we didn't even see this happening. But there was a man and his two kids fishing like basically right next to them. And he jumped in to... Try to save one of the kids. Yeah. Yeah. The other two kids, I think another person helped. Oh, who was there? Like a lifeguard. lifeguard, Yeah. Yeah. And I think a family member of the family who was letting their kids swim in the river might have been like an aunt or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, 
also assisted in saving those other two. Yeah, so those two down. got saved. But then... But this guy... Sorry. <laughs> I just need to say, like, <laughs> what our perspective was. Like, we just heard yelling and, like, help, help, and we saw people fishing, and so we thought they just caught a big fish and that they needed help, like, reeling it in. Yeah, I was ready to go get a spoonbill for him or something. Yeah, like you were kind of, like, excited. and like catfish. And I think we were even like, should you go help them? Like, yeah, I like, think they need help. See what this is. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, mo- that's like the mind I came in there with. <laughs> yeah. Cause we were, like I said, very far down. We couldn't really see. And so, yeah, you just started running down there, kind of like jogging. Probably slow. like 200 yards away. Yeah. And I just stayed back cause I'm not going to help reel in a fish. Yep. And then I looked down and you start going in the water and i'm like wait a second and so i start running down there and then then i had to swim i just swam to the nearest people i could help because when i got there the dad literally had a fishing pole in his hand and he was trying to cast at his kids and i just went to the one that he was trying to cast at i don't know if he was trying to get like a hook in one of them and reel them in or what are you serious yeah and he couldn't swim and he was just screaming in a very heavy accent so there's a language barrier again yeah and uh and i i turned to him and i'm like they need help like and then he's like yes help and then he started yelling help instead of whatever he was saying help 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 Mm. i was a lifeguard so i knew how to grab people and Mm -hmm. swim them back to the bank so not a problem but uh i swam up to him and it was that guy that chelsea brought up that guy was there with his two kids Mm mm-hmm and uh they were like small children probably yeah they were like eight yeah probably like eight or ten and then like six so i swam up and i realized it was two people one of their heads was underwater didn't see much of that person's face i attempted grabbing both of them but the guy that ended up dying in this situation was unable to like get him above water the whole time the kid. really i was unable to get the guy above water the kid was on top of the guy the dad who for, with yeah the other who was kids. trying to help that kid yeah got tired maybe took a lung full of water and went into shock and i was having a ton of trouble getting the guy to move i think i did get him to move a bit but i could feel myself getting tired and i'm like dealing with this guy that obviously got tired and uh ended up unconscious because of it kind of scary wasn't the kid pushing you down too like wasn't he kind of freaking out understandably yeah Yeah. i told the kid to breathe Mm -hmm. i didn't say anything else to him i just like like i ordered him to breathe Mm -hmm. i remember doing that yeah probably not the ideal thing to say to him but he like they i could feel him breathing a lot and i think that calmed him down yeah he wasn't in a big panic like he was on top of that guy yeah but the uh the guy i don't know if he got snagged on something or if like the current was so much that it was pulling him under but he was he ended up get, like, being way down there and it, me holding on to him still mm-hmm. and i couldn't get him back up and i made the decision to let him go yeah because i was getting tired and you had a kid on you too yeah and then i swam back with the kid as a big bummer yeah and then i got there i ran up and i only saw you coming out of the water I didn't see all the other stuff that happened. And so, yeah. Yeah, I came out of the water saying, like, there's there's a guy still in there. Yeah. And I was telling everybody. And, like, people were saying, like, no, we got them all. Mm -hmm. Even. And I was, like, thinking, like, oh, he must have just washed down and somebody got him. But he was, like, underwater. Mm -hmm. I was, like, not having a good time trying to pull him back up. He was pretty deep under yeah and then his kids were right there yeah his kids were left on the bank yeah and so i stayed with the kids because i figured okay if someone was in there i didn't see him but i'm assuming it was these kids parent because they don't have a parent around them like there's just these two kids on the beach right here yeah and so i just stayed with them and yeah we we ultimately had to like say to people these kids don't have a dad yeah like we were the only ones who knew and they're they're wondering where their dad's at yeah and uh that's what that's when the police got called yep and then yeah the fam i think their grandma came and stayed and we stayed with them until their grandma came yeah a very sad situation with the kids involved and everything yeah but yeah so what turned out or what started out as just like us fishing and thinking, oh, they just need help catching a fish. It was like, oh, turned into 
Yeah. A horrible, horrible situation. I had to go back and get my stuff, like my shoes and my fishing rods and stuff, and there was a walleye on the pole. On your pole? Yeah. We just had a worm in with a sinker on the bottom. Yeah. And I re- after all that, I went, went up my pole and I wheeled in, reeled in a walleye, and I didn't care at all. Yeah. And I just threw it back and went home. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. And then that, do you want to say, like, how that changed your life? Like, how you thought after that? Like, it just made you think, like, yeah. I really cannot waste life kind of thing. Yeah. When you just kind of have to make the decision to let somebody, I had to, like, let him die. You had to way. just leave him and not help him. Like, you couldn't help him. Yeah. You really look at life differently after that, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, I should formulate how that is Mm -hmm. it's kind of a hard topic for me yeah understandably it makes you think more hypothetically in a way like what if you just did die tomorrow are Mm -hmm. you good are you okay with all what your life was if you did die tomorrow and then it lights a fire under your butt like you better not regret anything kind of thing right yeah because that's what runs through your mind after you're dealing with something like that Mm -hmm. like do i regret anything Am I doing everything I want to be doing? Yeah. But but the reason the subscriber was asking about that was because you were on the news. You got this governor's award. You went to, what was it, like an award ceremony? Yeah. Stuff like that. So, yeah. I remember it was so awkward when I was receiving the governor's award because it was Terry Branstad was the governor at the time. And I, apparently you're supposed to, like, make eye contact with the governor and he's supposed to be like, good job, man while they're announcing you're you're on stage and the governor's in the front and for each governor's award they give out he like turns to him he's like and turns but i like didn't even look at him because i didn't i didn't know what was happening and apparently he was just staring at me for like a minute and i didn't look at him i I was kind of weird back then well my dad told me later like (laughs) you're you're supposed to like acknowledge that he exists and like oh my gosh because he's giving you an award (laughs) oh no (laughs) my bad well, he should understand, too. This is, like, a horrible situation. Like, people might be kind of traumatized, so... Yeah, I didn't feel like a like an a, a award for valor should be given to me, really. Because, like, like I made a decision to, like, leave this guy because it's too dangerous and I'm getting tired. And, like, I just watched that kid do that to this guy. And it's like, I don't know if I can get the kid back. Right. Well, I think the award was for saving the kid. Yeah. That's what it was for. It's just so sad. I can't... Really, really got me going in life, though. Yeah. Like, no messing around anymore. Because that's so sad. Yeah. (sighs) I don't know how you're going to transition this, because now I have, like, (laughs) my fly tying skills. (laughs) People want to know about my fly tying skills. You just watched YouTube videos. Well, I know um, people want to know, like, how did I get started in it? Did you just make me do it? And, you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to help you in some way, and you needed, um, or you wanted, like, feathers on your hooks to make, like, dress up your baits when you were selling them. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is before we had kids. So I was like, oh, I could tie them because i think you tried and it wasn't i probably said stuff like oh my baits would look so much better if they had dressed treble hooks on the back yeah (laughs) they all matched the paint scheme like and all the colors in the bait and everything you did yeah and i was i was probably really one step past encouraging you to do it yeah that's where i like to be and i really wanted to help you and i stopped helping you edit because I used to edit for you. Yeah. And it was it's much better if you do it. I, I also tried filming for you in the old videos. Yeah. So you took over all that. Best choice ever. And so I was like, I still wanted to help you in some way because I didn't have kids yet. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't working. That was like the in-between time before we got pregnant. So yeah, I was like, I could totally do that. And so I literally watched, I think, one YouTube video Just on one. how to do it. Yeah. And I learned how to, it was mainly how to tie the the end. Well, it was all of it. How to put the string on. The whip knot. Yeah. That one. How to put the string on, the whole thing. 
yeah. I watched. But the the whip knot was kind of difficult the in the thing. beginning. Yeah. But yeah, I was pretty good at it. Like when I first started. Yeah, you're like a natural. Yeah, I didn't really have any trouble. That's your artistic outlet. Yeah. Because you can go off of nothing and still make a good looking one. I can. Yes. That's where you shine artistically. That kind but of thing. But you know how you like to decorate a house? Yeah. And you like the, like your color coordination is really good too. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what tying a treble or a jig is. It's like, oh, there's this material and it goes good with that material. And if you put it just right, you know, not too much of one thing, not too much of the other. It's what makes that stuff look good. You know what? I just have a revelation. Before I thought it was easier to copy a bait and match it, but now I'm thinking I actually did really good not doing that and yeah. just making whatever I wanted. Yeah. And it's actually, I think it's harder to match one. And I've painted baits to Based your treble hooks before. Yeah. And it looks great. Yeah. That's my artistic outlet. You need to That's do more crazy. of it. That's crazy. You need to fire that Instagram <laughs> account back up. I know. Start pumping out the jigs and treble hooks. Yeah. I haven't done them in a long time. When was the last one? Yeah, and I'm even losing followers. You're losing followers? Yeah. I'm okay. down to 5,000 even. I was a little bit over that. I get people unsubscribing all the time. They're all passionate about it. You changed, man. Oh, so not too long ago. It was March 2022, so not even a year. It was less than a year ago. What if I said ago. that about a video? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a big problem. <laughs> and it was for one of your baits, so I yeah. had to do it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if I even did one a week. Yeah. That'd be better. One post a week on Instagram will gain you followers probably instead of losing. I, know. I remember the funniest story from cross country though. Cross country was fun in high school. Mm -hmm. Very random, sorry, just popping in here with a story. But you would be on cross country runs and this was at a meet where there's a big race, but we're warming up beforehand. So we're, we're just going on a jog. It's very, very common in cross country where you start your jog and then you get hit with having to go to the bathroom real quick from starting your job because you're bouncing around running you know and you weren't before number one or two either one it just jumbles stuff up and it it mm. gets stuff going so i had to go to the bathroom real bad at this meet so we all had to like turn around and go back to the usually it's just like an outhouse this was more like a building outhouse is that a park mm -hmm. i don't know what you call those but just it was like one a of those. park bathroom park bathroom but at this bathroom it was just a seat and a hole in the ground, very mm -hmm. deep hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. So I was doing my business. Number one or two? Two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this hole was like, you, you'd let one loose and it like, you could count the seconds and then bloop. It was like a surprisingly deep hole in the ground. And apparently it had, it had been used a lot that day and it, I did that, and three seconds later, you hear the bloop, and then I felt something hit me while I was sitting there. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last story. The podcast is almost over. I'm sorry. And all I said was, like, the most desperate, like, one time in my videos when I tipped my kayak, I said, oh, no. Mm -hmm. And, I, like, people thought that was desperate. No! After that happened, I was like... Oh no! As desperate as it gets. Yeah. And everybody outside the outhouse waiting for me just started laughing so much. Like they knew what happened. They could probably hear what happened. And everybody just broke down laughing. Did you have poop like on I'm your butt? Like I'm dying. Oh no. I didn't look. I just cleaned myself with the toilet paper, paper available as much as possible. You didn't look at it? I went back on my run. It's like making me feel bad. You looked at it. It's like it. it's making me feel sick right now. No, you you looked at it. There's no way you look didn't look. I, you can feel where it hit, and then I just wiped it like as much as I could, like with probably four goes of just wiping that off backside, you know? Dude. It was an honest, like, guttural reaction of just saying, oh, no, to that, though. And, like, the way I said it was just made everybody understand what happened instantly. Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. Anyway... We'll end on that 
Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>